everybody. Please welcome back to the program, Paul Haggard. Thanks for coming back. Thank you. Thank you. So I had a couple of questions for you. Bring it on. Oh I'm God. ready, man, because I'm uh, not really up to no, asking today. Exactly. Long night. Yeah. So uh, the hour? Yes. Now half hour? Yes. How do you feel about that? I feel great. Yeah. <laughs> so is it like now you have to be like half as entertaining, or is it just yeah. faster? No, it just means you have uh, less time to be great. Ah, so. Okay. <laughs> so, so I have to be funny really, really quickly, right. or the pithy and meaningful very quickly. I'll take meaningful. Good, pithy, okay. not so much, but meaningful I'll definitely okay. take. Okay. Actually, you're pulling off meaningful quite a bit uh, with this organization. Yeah, you know, it, it's a great organization. We started uh, about three years ago. Uh, I just, uh, I was really impressed by this man I met uh, in Haiti, this priest and doctor, uh, Father Rick Frechette. And uh, I just you know, went down to meet him in the slums and hung out with him for a week and then said, he's just doing such great work and has no funding. So I uh, started going back and taking some of my Hollywood friends down with me and uh, getting him a little press. And then the earthquake hit, you know, and uh, we've been able to raise a little money before that, but now it was, the need was really terrific, so. Now, most people started going to Haiti, well, not most, but in the second wave started going to Haiti because of the earthquake. Of why, why were you there first before that? Um, because I guess I would always been fascinated with Haiti. It was a forgotten country. It's it's something that it's it's an hour and a half from from the U.S. shores, and uh, and it's one of the two poorest countries in the world. And we just no one knows anything about it. Mm -hmm. And so I was always fascinated by the politics and, and what we'd done as Americans, because I'm Canadian and American. And as soon as I sort of left here and went to the states, I I just took on all of America's sins on my shoulders. Oh yeah, those are mine. <laughs> and so don't and, take them all on. Yeah. That's a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So between the French and the Americans, we've really you know, messed over uh, Haiti quite a bit. To, to go there and to see that you know, they need funding, they want to do something, and yeah. then to convince your friends to come down and be a part of it, that's a bigger challenge because Haiti is not, it's a compromised situation. Yes. So the, did you immediately know what it was you wanted to do? No, no, we sort of felt our way around. And uh, I mean, if you, if, you, if you drive past the slums, you know, all you can feel is pity. But if you get out and you walk and you meet people and you talk to them, well, my French is awful, but you talk to them and you, 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 you start to, to feel not only what they feel a little bit, but you start to feel the joy that comes from the slums too. And so I'm, I'm a selfish prick. I go there uh, for that joy, for that fix, uh, because they, they have such dignity and such joy there. It's, it's, it's remarkable. So you're a joy junkie? I am, yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting place to go to yeah. get it, though, because there are easier places to go to get it. So there must be something in you that makes you want to go there and be a part of that. I'm really screwed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really? It's truly. Really, in what sense? Truly. In every sense. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Ho screwed up uh, because of the whole Hollywood thing or before the Hollywood thing? Oh, long before that, I think. Okay. Yeah. Where do you think it comes from? Probably my parents. It doesn't always come from there. Yeah, I, I would imagine. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, you got, did you get a rebellious streak from your parents? Oh, yeah. yeah. My, my dad, uh, my mom was, was, a, was fabulous. She, uh, uh, we were raised Catholic, and uh, one day uh, she, uh, she noticed the parish priest had bought a, uh, a new Cadillac. Oh. And so she went in to talk to him and said, uh, you know, what's this with the Cadillac? There are poor people in our parish. She said, well, he said, well, you know, God wants me to have this Cadillac. And, and, <laughs> and she said, well, God doesn't want us coming to your church anymore. And so that was it. We're done. <laughs> Over so, a car? Over a car, yeah. So, That's incredible. Yeah, my dad was always, he's just, yeah, they're, they're just uh, very proud of both of them. They, they, uh, uh, they're the ones that encouraged me to go to, to Los Angeles and follow my dream and, when I was very young. So then in a sense, is, it, is, is writing and, and, and directing, is, is, is that about getting that, whatever that noise is inside your head, that, that it's all about that, getting yeah. that out? It's about asking myself tough questions and then trying to figure out who I am and, and where my place is in, 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 in this and uh, in, in relationships or in situations and crash was all just questions about me. I just, I just basically am only interested in myself. <laughs> yeah. The, the idea of kind of, the problem with asking yourself tough questions we often find as we get older is that eventually they require answers. Yeah. yeah Do you I, like the answers you find about no, yourself? No, often I don't. And that's why I find it really troubling and that's why I write movies. Yeah, I don't like the answers at all. The, the, the Haiti thing, I often wondered how that would affect your art in the end because does it change what you want to write about when you have those yeah, kind I, of... I, it, Yes, it does. I mean, when we we're, when were first there, when it was just after the quake, I mean, kids were having their arms and legs amputated with, with, on Motrin. So this is not something you can go and see and not be affected by. It changes your life then. Oh, yeah. It Did changed you? like before. I mean, we'd, we took people down right after the quake, and there was a bunch of us in the, we were riding through in the pickups, and we got there. It took me five days to get down there because of all the red tape and that. And my plane was turned around twice in Haitian airspace, and I had to go back. And, and um, and we're in the back of the truck, and, and people are going, oh my god, look at that damage. And I go, no, no, that's not the quake damage. That is. Wow. That's how Haiti was before. And so, yeah, it's... 
people ask, you know, will Haiti get back to normal? He said, you don't want Haiti normal. Not from what it was. It was it's been, so we have to do something. We, have a, we, we really have a need to, and a responsibility to, to, to help these folks, to and, help and, themselves. And getting artists to, be, to participate in this. Yeah, I think, I think, I think uh, uh, artists have a particular responsibility. We, have, we're, we, we communicate. And so we should talk about something since we communicate. And, um, so, uh, and, and most of these folks really do. We've got a great group of people that have joined together, a group of friends, and, uh, and they all want to do something. They want to use their voice effectively. That's what it's trying to do. As you, was it as you got older, using your voice? Because I was thinking about, I read that, that, that open letter you wrote after Scientology yeah. wouldn't support uh, gay marriage. Yeah. And I read that in, a couple times thinking, Holy shit! <laughs> what an idiot! No, 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 <laughs> no! You're the only guy who's ever done that, though, yeah, that yeah, publicly. And I true. thought th this man is putting his principle on this issue. Mm. Um, it is the launch pad for a lot of other questions you had. Yeah. And it was was it part of your artist's responsibility to kind of go and say, "Listen." Yeah. Once you know something, you got to speak out on it. You can't just you know. There's a lot of people that, uh, that see things and, and decide for their own reasons. Just to you know, it's not not. Necessary to, to say anything, and I'm just you know, dumb that way. It's, it's the most interesting religion in this era because people don't know much about it, and people don't know how to talk about it, and people who are in it almost never talk about it, yeah. especially if they have any sort of profile. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you were in it for a long time because a lot of whatever was in there yeah, spoke to you. A lot of good you. stuff. A lot of great stuff. So when you left, did you did you do you miss that? Is there something about it that's not? You miss the community. Yeah. You, know, you miss the friends. Yeah. Any repercussions from that letter? Oh yeah. Really? Of course. Yeah. Do you regret the letter? No, not at all. Why Prop 8? You know, I just thought the idea that, that we could take away rights uh, from, from people who wanted to you know, just have a civil union, just be married, to just being able to have the same rights as everybody else. I thought, I thought that was ridiculous if we could take these, their rights away. How, how, how dare we? Mm -hmm. And so I, was, you know, I donated some money, and I was out protesting for it. And, uh, and I found out that uh, you know, they'd, uh, one of the branches of the church had supported it. I said, no, what the this. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh -uh. So, uh, yeah. Here I have cards, and on these cards, rapid fire questions to dig inside is my pick a card, yellow to number. Doesn't matter, I'm gonna pick one. No, no, no. no, no. I'm not going Wrong. to. That's a, what was that answer? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, what's your favorite film of all time? My favorite film? Oh, I haven't got one. Really? Too many. Second favorite film? Oh, uh, Blow Up. The Excited Blow Up, yeah, that's yeah. right. Well, yeah. you became a photographer, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. Were you a good photographer? No, terrible. Favorite Canadian movie? Oh, it would be between Strange Brew and Going Down the Road. Two great choices. <laughs> exactly. Great choices. Great choices. Best line you've ever written in a movie? Oh, Christ. Uh, not that one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure somebody else wrote that. I, I, I have no idea. No idea. Have you ever read a line that you watched go by in a movie and went, man, I should have taken that one out? Oh, yeah. Every second one. <laughs> <laughs> Which writing credit are you most proud of? Facts of Life, Different Strokes, or Who's the Boss? <laughs> I think some of the very special episodes of, of Different Strokes, I think I'm going to go down to that. That's why when people think of me, they think of special episodes of Different Strokes. <laughs> it's actually hanging on their wall. Uh, what's the one thing you miss about high school? Oh, being beaten up daily, I think, is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I don't miss it a lot, uh, but it, it doesn't happen as much, so, so I, I do tend to miss it. Yes. Right. Is, is that where you no, started to root for the underdog? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, gotten, gotten a few fights back then. Yeah, Are you a good fighter? Nose. No, terrible. I got, <laughs> the last every fight I've ever been in. The trick is, put keys in your hand. Oh yeah, that's always the trick. I was I was always the guy who got, who picked on the big guy, and and he was, he was picking on somebody else, and I'd be going like, you can't. And I'm going, what that? If that's his chest, <laughs> this is a mistake. You know? <laughs> what's a, what's a movie or a movie scene that makes you cry all the time? Oh God, uh, I, I cry at was it was was, it, was, it, was that asteroid picture that that uh, well, like Armageddon? Yes, Armageddon. You cried at that? Oh yeah, I was cried it the at Bruce Willis saying I've got to go back and yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely cry at that exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I got to leave you. I got to go die on the asteroid. <laughs> Cry every time. Yeah. What makes you angry? Ah, uh, intolerance. Yeah, especially my own. Have you ever eaten the food, Haggis? No, thank you for asking. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what's so the like cannibalism at that point? What is yes, it? Exactly, exactly, yes. Exactly. <laughs> uh, what's the one thing you miss about London? London, Ontario. Yeah. Um, <laughs> My family and friends. Your family, that's a good answer. Yeah. What's the, what is the one thing you, you can't live without not counting your family or friends? Mm, coffee. Okay. Yeah. Do you, do you drink like regular 75 cent coffee or that $8 coffee? I drink anything that'll, that's liquid. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, what's the most expensive thing you ever bought that wasn't a car or a house? Mm. I have no idea. 
Want to give you a, next time somebody asks that question? Yeah. Say you bought a really nice ring for a woman you love. There you go. I bought a really nice ring for a woman I love. We'll edit that in exactly. for you. Um, I did, actually. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> What's the biggest challenge with Canadian television? Um, American television. It plays a huge role, doesn't it? It does, yes. <laughs> um, does Paul Gross owe his career to you? Yes. <laughs> this is, this is going to sound, the next question I'm going to ask you is going to sound like a joke, but it's not really a joke. Oh, Paul's doesn't. at home going, him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, given the success of shows like The Wire and Homicide and those kind of shows, th then if you think about your show, uh, Easy Streets, uh, was it a little too ahead of his time? Uh, just network cowardice? Both. Favorite hockey team? I, you know, I was thrown out of Canada because they don't like hockey. God damn. I know. That's why they made me leave. Nice. Yeah. Um, next movie, uh, you're halfway through it? The next three days. Oh, no, the, one, the yeah, next three days. The new one with Russell Crowe. Yeah, it comes right. out in November. That's yep. right. And then you're writing another one now, right? I am right now. How's that one going? Badly. Yeah. Is that unique? Does it usually go badly? No, it always is. I, I write about, you know, I'm writing about relationships, which are things I don't understand. And so uh, you just dig in there and it's just, you, you go, oh, yeah, I don't understand this. I better go figure it out. Yeah. So, yeah. As, and the, the, Russell Crowe breaks his wife out of jail. Is that the idea? Yeah. yeah. What, what's it like to work with him? He's great. I mean, he's a piece of work. I'm a piece of work. It worked out really, really well. <laughs> exactly. We really like working each other. Exactly. The film was called The Next Three Days. And also check out Artists for Peace and Justice. It's apjnow.org. Apjnow.org. Uh, Paul Haggis, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.